what up? Welcome back to the channel. I'm with IJ and we are locked in. This is day five of our six day recap of Supercell and episode five is called Rodney. Now we're going to follow Rodney and see how his powers play a role in his everyday occurrences. And also at the end of episode four was the first time we've seen all four without Michael in one room. Now it's a stare down and no one knows each other in here. So everyone is about to kind of get a shock because they've never seen this many people with powers. So before we jump into this and break this episode down, if you like this kind of content, superheroes, you like that London accent, then you at the right place. Hit that subscribe button, turn on your notification bell so you get something every time I upload. I'm on that road to 50,000 subscribers and we need about 800 more. So let's make it happen. Use your power and hit that subscribe button and share this to somebody that hasn't seen the show. Now let's go ahead and jump into it. This is episode five, Rodney. Everyone's in the room on high alert. Taser, he sees a guy with the safe and he doesn't know who's with crazy and who isn't. So he shoots his gun. Pow! Andre uses the safe, blocks the bullet. The bullet ricochets. Sabrina, she uses her powers and stops the bullet from hitting her and Char. It goes over towards Rod. Rod is fast. He dodges the bullet. Now everyone has to get the hell up out of here and they run their separate ways. Now throughout this whole series, we've been seeing the cameras picking up on everything that's happening. Top left, we see Sabrina and her sister coming out the club. Bottom left, we see Andre at the ATM machine. Top right, we see Taser after he just stabbed up Chucky. And bottom right, we see Michael when he disappeared when they shot the bullet at him. So right now, they're wondering how the hell did all these people with powers link up in one spot at one time? Because there's a supercell activity going on, and they know that somebody must be helping them. But who? Now, Mike didn't show up. Remember, he got the call that his mother was in the hospital having a moment because of her sickle cell. So they kicked her out and he's trying to figure out what the hell's happening. Dion hasn't spoke to him because he told her that she went to the club after everything that was happening. But he didn't go to the club to hang out. He was actually there trying to help people out, a.k.a. Rod. So right now he's going through it and he needs to get all the other four with their powers back together. At the hospital, Rod's in here sitting next to his boy Spud and he's upset and he's hurt because crazy in them. They took him in. He was the one that showed up with the drugs and they thought he was the one that was able to sell it within five minutes. But in reality, it was Rod. So he feels bad about himself. But he runs into Sabrina and he says, I seen you last night. You got powers like I do. Let me talk to you. She's saying not here because this is the place that she works. So she's not going to help Rod at this moment because she still doesn't understand what's going on and doesn't want to be linked to this. So Rod, he leaves. After he leaves the hospital, Rod goes to his mother's house. Now, his mother is white and he's mixed race. So when he gets there, she's kind of shocked. Why are you here? And he's like, what do you mean? I'm your son. I came to see my mom. Now, I've changed. I'm making real money now. You know, I'm not a I'm not a misfit. I'm not a letdown. But she says, you got to get out of here because Greg's on his way home. And he tells her, Greg is a racist, mom. Why are you still with him? I got enough money for you to move out. And then he also wants to know, if he isn't a racist, then why did he choose Rachel over Rod? Now, Rod has a different father, obviously. Greg and his mother have a child, Rachel. And that's why he's saying, if he wasn't racist, then why wouldn't he accept me? But he accepted you and his daughter. So now Rod, he realizes he's on his own. AJ goes to his dad's house and he's wondering where the hell he been. But remember, Andre is out all night using his powers. And when you use your powers, you get drained, extreme fatigue. So AJ can't get in the house and he's thinking his dad is neglecting him. But Andre is just on the couch sleeping and the phone is going off. This is a deep sleep. You're not waking up off no pounding on a door. Someone's going to need to slap you or throw water on you. Taser ends up getting a call from Crazy. And Crazy told him, next time I see you, I'm going to unalive you. And after everything that went down in the trap house, Crazy automatically thinks Taser did it. And he tells him, you need to go check on your granny. Now, when Taser gets here, he goes invisible because he don't know what's going on in the house. But once he gets in the house, he sees his grandma on the floor and Taser sent them goonies over there to attack her. Back at work, Sabrina had left early because she has a lot on her mind. Now, whenever your supervisors call you in, just like me, I'm pretty sure all you guys are nervous. I'm always thinking, what did I do? How did I mess up? Now, they're telling her, listen. 
We understand if you have issues going on, just let us know ahead of time. And she's saying, listen, I've been working overtime and I haven't got paid for it. And they're saying you should get paid for that. Actually, they're bringing Sabrina in to make her the head nurse and give her a promotion. They were just letting her know, hey, just give us a heads up. We know you work hard and it hasn't gone unnoticed. Now, if you remember earlier, her sister Charlene said you wouldn't get promoted working there because they only want to hire white people. Well, at least promote them. While Sabrina is at work, Charlene is laid up with crazy and they're at the house. Now, we already know that Sabrina doesn't want her sister dealing with this guy, but she doesn't listen. He got her a watch and she's like, "Okay, cool. But he gets a call. And when you look outside, there's some girls in OG wagon waiting on him. So, of course, Charlene gets jealous. Like, why are these women over here? She tells him, I don't care about your money. And he chokes her and takes the watch back. And then he leaves the house. Now, Char, she takes a knife and she chases after him. Michael's hearing about his mom. He also knows that July 9th is right around the corner. He's trying to save everybody any way that he can. So he goes to the grave site, but there is no burial plot yet because obviously July 9th hasn't came around. So he calls his boy and he's like, man, I don't know what I need to do or how I need to get this done. But some way I need to save Donnie, Dion. I don't want anything to happen to her. Now, Dion goes back to talk to Miss Johnson. Now, Miss Johnson gave her her number and said, listen, contact me. So when she gets up here, her co-worker, Jasmine's father, locks the door and they give her a rundown of what happened. Now, they said they filed a police report, but the police aren't powerful enough to get their daughter back. She used to call. She used to say that people were hurting them. But now them phone calls stopped. So Dion says, hey, my boyfriend, he has powers also. His name is Mike. Maybe I can link him with you guys and give him some information to protect your child. Now, they tell her about an estate. It's called Ashridge Estate. They telling her this is where they're holding people, but the police won't do anything about it. Dion goes home and tells Mike about everything, and she also tells him about the information she found online. But while they're talking, there's a knock on the door, and it's Rodney. Now, Rodney is saying, "Uh, Mike, we need to go. I've seen all the other four people that you were talking about. Well, minus you, it was three. But I know where everyone is, and there's this big, strong guy. I can take you to him. I've seen all of them. So Mike, he knows that this is something that he has to do. In order to save Dion because he went in the future, we know the deadline is July 9th. So time is ticking and you know time is never on our side. Taser and the Tower Boys are riding around and they're thinking of different ways that they can find out where Crazy is. Now Taser has an idea where he might be. But as they're driving, if you remember back in the first episode, there was a girl by the name of Veronica that was in the house that told the Sixers that the Tower Boys were here. So they pulled a car over. Now, Veronica is saying, yeah, I did set you youths up. What you going to do about it? I'm a girl. I'm a sixer. Well, at this point, Taser ain't playing around. Once Crazy crossed the line and attacked his grandma, he punches her, he kicks her, and then they run off. He's sending the message that Taser ain't playing around. Well, Rod told Mike that he knows where Andre is, if that's his name. So he takes him outside of the club. Now, remember him and his boy? This is where they used to meet up at. Now, Rod is saying, where's your friend? He's always with you, the strong guy. We need to talk to him. Now, of course, you're looking out for your buddy. So he's like, I don't know who you're talking about. Well, Rod gets angry, lights up his eyes. He's like, okay, 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 listen. I can't just give you Andre's number, but I'll take your number and I'll make sure that Andre gets in contact with you because they seen a picture of him and Andre and they verified it. So now we at least got Andre's contact information. After whooping on Veronica, Taser tells them to go to this house. Now you see that flat over there, that yard over there? That's where Crazy's mother lives. And he says Crazy comes and checks on them every single day. So now they're just going to sit outside and wait and wait and wait till Crazy shows up. Mike and Rye show up to the towers, Clifton Towers, where the tower boys are from. Now, they're trying to get in contact with Taser. But remember, Mike only has his boy's number. And of course, they're not answering because they're over at Crazy Mama House waiting. Now, we do get to see the security footage from where they're doing research at this laboratory. And they want to know who Mike is on the phone with because they're trying to figure out who's helping them connect the dots 
and linking up all of these supercells. As the Taro boys are sitting outside, someone looks out the window and it was Crazy's mom and she ended up calling the police. So of course the boys, they trying to get up out of here, but they end up getting pulled over. Now they do have a gun on them. So how are they going to get out of this? Once they get pulled over, they give the gun to Taser. Taser goes invisible, opens up the door and he gets out. But it turns out they still have some product on them, a little bit of drugs. And they place the drugs up under the back seat. When they search the vehicle, there's no gun, nothing to be found. But then they call the police dogs. The dog shows up. It has a hit on that back seat. Taser's in the woods looking like, damn, they didn't got caught. So he's the only one out. And these three, they getting booked. They're getting taken on down to whatever you call it in the UK. A precinct is what we call it. We're just going to call it the big house, the slammer. Rod is on his way to meet up with Mike because his homeboy told him it's a matter of life or death. They got powers like you do. So he gets dressed and he's heading down there. But before he can meet up with Mike, who's around the corner, one of those guys in the hoods in the mask show up. Now, Andre doesn't know what the hell's going on. This guy punches Andre, throws him into the wall. Then Andre uses his strength, blocks a punch. But in the end, it's too many of them. They're too strong for Andre and they knock Andre out. And they end up dragging him to the portal. Rod and Mike show up to Sabrina's house. They're like, hey, once we get Andre, that's four of us. And we just need to go meet up with Taser. Now, Taser is walking off by himself also because his crew, the Tower Boys, had just been locked up. Now, one of the hooded guys in all black, they show up and they getting ready to attack Taser. But luckily, Mike, Rod and Sabrina show up. So before they can hit him with electricity, Sabrina blocks the electricity and they're all looking like uh oh what the hell is going on but now everyone is together they're only missing andre in their strength and numbers because once you get around another supercell your powers begin to get stronger so we have a stare down between our supercells and whoever these guys are in all black and they got the portal behind them and they're trying to bring them in to the research lab so it looks like the war is just about to begin now, are we at full strength? No, because Andre isn't here and Taser is hurt and we haven't harnessed our powers yet. But it is on. It is time. All right, there you go. To recap for episode five of Supercell, we got one episode left and we're trying to get young Jasmine out of here. We're trying to save Dion. We got a lot on our plate. Let me know what you think about Rye. And is this war going to be able to go down and be effective if Andre isn't a part of the big five? Let me know what you think. I'm Old IJ. If you like this kind of content, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Road to 50,000 subscribers is on the way. I appreciate all of you. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow. Jimmy on the beat, boy.